Hi everyone, my name's Laura and you're watching my channel So Very Laura. Welcome back if you're an existing subscriber and welcome if you're new here. And I'd like to start off by saying a massive welcome to all my lovely new subscribers. Um, I think a lot of you have come on board because of the Busy Bee Challenge, which is actually what I'm um, going to talk to you about today. Um, because I've had a big flurry of new subscribers since um, Sam Sequin Gurley and Christine Gemini Stitcher, who dreamt up the Busy Bee Challenge, uh, launched it earlier this week. So welcome on board. Thank you for subscribing and I hope you like what you see. So yes, as advertised, I am going to do my introductory vlog today for the Busy Bee Challenge. Um, so if you don't know and you've come to this because you're an existing subscriber and this is just the next vlog that I've released, Christine, who is the Gemini Stitcher, and Sam, who is Sequin Girly Creates here on YouTube and also on Instagram, and I'll link their channels below, came up with this idea last year and Christine reached out to me then, but I couldn't take part because I wasn't in a position to do a pattern swap because I was away from home at the time. Um, and But I decided I'd really like to take part this year. And so what we're doing is there's eight, including Sam, Christine and myself, taking part. It's all just for fun. There's no prizes, but there's eight of us taking part who are all vloggers on YouTube. And each month over the months of July, August and September, we're each going to do the same challenge. Um, and then we will release a vlog saying how we got on and showing our makes on the last Wednesday of each month, which for July is actually the 31st of July. And the challenges are loosely based around what happens on the sewing bee as it's shown in the UK. So we've got a pattern challenge, which is what I'm going to concentrate on today. We've got a refashion, which is coming up in August. And then in the final month, it's if you like our kind of I can't remember what they call it, showstopper garment, but that might be Bake Off. I think it's showstopper. can't remember. Made to measure. Sorry. Is it right? I can't remember. I'm really sorry. Um, but anyway, you have to make a, um, a Mediterranean beach holiday item or outfit. So that's what the last challenge will be. But we're starting with the pattern challenge. And if you watch the sewing bee, and I know not all of you can get it if you live overseas, um, we start off with the sewing bee where the contestants are all given the same pattern to make. But the point is they have to do it without knowing what they're going to get. So Sam and Christine have tried to replicate that by having each of the contestants send a pattern to one of the other contestants. So we could stipulate things like no big four or no trousers so that we didn't get something that we absolutely didn't want to make but we were each allocated a vlogger. So I sent to Nikki, who is Sew and Snip, and she's already revealed what I've sent to her. I'll link everybody below. And the lovely um, Claire, who is Love Red, Loves Red Sews, was um, the person who was picked out to send a pattern to me. And that's what I'm really going to talk to you about today. So, um, Claire emailed me and we had a bit of a chat about what I did and didn't like. And I said, really fairly, fairly relaxed, but not a good idea to send me big four because I sit across the size banding when they're split into two. And therefore, because she didn't know my sizes, it, it might work or it might not. So we ruled out big four and I said, nothing too low cut at the back, not because I don't like them. I do, but I don't like my back. And nothing massively low cut because I don't have um, a particularly sort of stunning cleavage. I've got more of a motorway than a B road. So, yeah. So I just said, but other than that, I'm pretty happy, really. Um, and I also said, having had a quick look at her Instagram pages, I really liked a lot of the tops that she'd made. So anything that she thought was kind of interesting in the top department would be fine by me. So um, 
Claire took all this information on board and she sent me a lovely pattern and I'm going to reveal that to you now and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what fabrics I could make it in and I'd be really interested if you let me know what pattern, what um, fabric you think I should make it in out of the ones I've picked out um, and yeah so without further ado what did Claire send me? She sent me this and this is the paper theory Olia shirt and shirt dress so she sent it to me with the shirt in mind really but as she said you know I could do the shirt dress if I wanted but I really like the look of the shirt so the shirt is what I'll make at least the first time round so you can see it's got this really interesting it's great because the line drawings are on the front it's got this really interesting sleeve so it's kind of like a dolman but then it's got this kind of underlayered bit it's got standard cuffs and collar um placket down the front and these pockets but this really lends itself i think to color blocking or playing with fabrics in different ways not sure i'm going to do that first off but i think this is something that if i can get it to fit me properly i'm going to want to make more and more i think and it's got this pleat at the back and it's got plackets on the cuffs and Claire said she picked it because it got some interesting um, features um, but it wasn't kind of like a massively massively difficult make in terms of you know having to do a job as well and actually being away for part of the month so I'm really happy so thank you Claire for your choice I'm really thrilled so what does it say about the pattern so it says it's suitable for an advanced sewist, so we'll see. Uh, and the style notes say, I apologise, I'm reading this from the pattern. It says, Olia is a modern loose fitting shirt with traditional designs and a classic silhouette, but it features unusual style lines, as we saw. The simplicity of the style makes it easy to wear, which is always good, and it's designed to be a versatile wardrobe staple. It has all the details of a traditional Oxford shirt with a two-piece stand and collar, a front button placket, a back yoke with a box pleat and a barrel cuff with a tailored placket and double pleat at the wrist. The cut of the sleeve is unlike a regular shirt and has no front armhole, yet does have a back armhole, so that is really different, isn't it? This unusual geometric detail elevates the shirt into something that is interesting and design led whilst also providing some hidden shaping in the front yoke seems to accommodate your bust. Oh, sorry, front yoke seems to accommodate your bust. There is an additional option to make a shirt dress. The fit and pattern pieces of both styles are exactly the same, except the front and back body of the dress, which have been lengthened. The dress finishes mid calf with splits at the side and there's an optional belt to cinch it in if desired. But I, as I said, I'm going to do the shirt. So the fabrics that are recommended are medium weight fabrics like cotton, linen and flannel. And lightweight fabrics like crepe de chine, viscose or georgette. And then it goes on to say it will also make up in heavier fabrics if you want. But for the minute, I'm going to stick with um, a lighter weight fabric. And I've decided, having done a little bit of reading and reviews on the net, that um, I know it's got a one inch seam allowance and some people have said when they've made it, if they've been using something like viscose that frays easily, that can make it a bit challenging. So whilst I think it would look lovely made up in a viscose with all that looseness and drapiness, I've decided first time out, I'm going to make it in cotton. So that's been how I have chosen my selection of fabrics. They're all cotton of varying weights. Um, and I'm also going to need some interfacing and I'm going to need um, nine buttons. And I really like the fact that it essentially says there's a range of button sizes you can have. So you can have anywhere between 11 millimetres and 15 millimetres, which I really like the fact that there's that kind of flexibility. I mean, I'm sure we all do that anyway, but it's quite nice the pattern says that. So in terms of sizing, and I'm not going to go through this in detail because I know that I'll put the link to the pattern and I know that bores some people. But just to say it comes in sizes 6 to 28. And in terms of the bust, um, it's a 31 and a half inch up to 56 inch. 
but there's actually quite a lot of ease in it. So when you look at the ease measurements, there's around somewhere between nine and 11 inches, depending on your size of ease. So for me, I think, although technically I probably come out as size 14 in the bust and on the hips, I'm probably even a 16. I think I'm going to make a straight size 12 because there is the hips come out at 47 and three quarter inches, as does the bust and the waist comes out at 47 inches, which is enough room, I think. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And based on that, I need either two metres and five centimetres. Don't forget the five centimetres. Um, of fabric if I if it's 115 centimetres wide or uh, 1.58 metres of fabric if it's 140 centimetres wide and that's important because I've got quite a few cottons to show you here that actually are 115 centimetres wide because they're quilting cottons so yeah worth noting right so let me show you which fabrics I've got in mind. So first one, apologies because I'm looking down again so I can tell you how much I've got in terms of um, fabric. So the first one, even if you've joined me relatively recently, you might have seen this before. So this is a barley batik quilting cotton. So I think it's technically a blender. And I saw somebody buying this when I was buying something else on my first day at Sewing for Pleasure. And I kind of thought, I have to have that. So I went back and bought it on the same day. Um, and I have two metres of this and it is 112 centimetres wide. So technically I am five centimetres short on this. But I'm hoping that maybe I could squeeze it out of that and they're being on the liberal side or they might be allowing for directional print and I think this would be absolutely fine and I really like this and I think it's also quite work appropriate with a pair of um, blue trousers navy blue trousers something like that or even black trousers would look okay with it so I like this for its kind of smartness and its simplicity so that is option one. And as I said, I got it from Bombay Fabrics at Sewing for Pleasure. So that's option one. I should say I've got other cottons that I'm not going to show you, but I've knocked them out if I either think I just don't want to make this shirt in those, uh, either because I've earmarked them for something else or I just don't think it would look great in it. Or if I've got so much of it that I think it would be a waste to use just two metres of it for this and eliminate the possibility of making a dress or dungarees. So like the coffee fabric that I got in America, I could do that. But I think I could also make a dress out of it or dungarees. So I don't want to cut into the length. So second fabric where the blue was really quite sort of sensible is this one. I was thinking about Sam because I put this in my vlog which was called help I've got space hogs in my fabric stash and this was one of them and Sam always thinks of that title and laughs so this is one of the space hogs in my fabric stash you might recognize it because other vloggers have used this print but I think they may have used it it's a Lady McElroy but it's also I think available in a kind of slightly more compact um Print. that's the word I'm looking for so same picture same image but slightly more compact and this is Tokyo Nights and I think it's a cotton Marley lawn so it's a bit lighter than a quilting cotton obviously and it is super loud and yes okay it it, it was quite expensive because it was a Lady McElroy but I got it in a sale online from So Wardrobe so I've got 2.5 meters of this and it is wider so I'd have about a meter left that I might be able to use to make something else and there's part of me that says don't use an expensive fabric first time around and there's part of me that says Laurie you've had it sat in your stash for two years and you haven't cut into it just use it so that's option two it's certainly very bright I'm not entirely sure it's work appropriate sort of with nail bar and stuff written all over it but it wouldn't have been fun with a pair of jeans 
So yeah, that's option two. So that's the Lady McElroy. So we go from the really brightly coloured and we get a bit more into slightly more sober fabric, I suppose. So this I've also had sat in my stash for ages. And this is um, a cotton poplin, quilting cotton again. Um, and it's got these leaves on it. So it's kind of, obviously you can see it's black. And then it's got these leaves on it in kind of gold and bronze and white. And I do like this. I just think it's really... It's kind of elegant, I think, because I just like the different colours of the the leaves on it. And I got this from Trago Mills. And again, I've had it ages. I've had it ages. I must have had it not that long after I started sewing, maybe three or four years. It is narrow, but I've got three metres of it, so I'd have I'd have plenty. And I'd have some I'd have some left over, but again, not not kind of stupid amounts. So yeah. That is, again, probably a work appropriate option. What do you think? Let me know. Similar kind of colour scheme. And Jess, so what if I sew? If you're watching, you'll recognise this because you were with me when I bought this. So first time I met Jess, I was doing some work um, where she, um, at a university near where she lives. And... We met up and went to her local fabric shop, which is A&M Textiles, and I bought this. So this is, um, you can see all these beautiful clock faces on black again. And I bought it because if you've ever watched Mock the Week, which if you haven't seen it or don't live in the UK, it was a comedy show, a kind of panel comedy show, and they used to look at the news in the week. And basically take the mickey out of it. <laughs> and Ed Byrne, who is an Irish comedian, um, has the most fantastic kind of steampunk clock shirts. And I've always wanted to make one. So that's why I got this. So this could be my chance. And so this came from A&M Textiles. And it is narrow, but I've got 2.8 metres of it because um, basically they gave me the end of the bolt. So um, I've got plenty of it. Again, it's slightly heavier weight. It's a poplin. Okay, so that's another fairly... I was going to say sober option. I don't know if that's the right word. But again, I think I could wear that one to work. This one I could definitely wear to work. So this is a white shirting fabric. It's wide and I have exactly two metres of it. So plenty. Um, so probably of all the ones I've shown you that I know I could get it out of, this would leave the least waste. So quite pretty, quite flowery, got lots of different colours in it, quite summery and lots of different colours that I could pick out for um, skirts or trousers. So, yeah, and that came from Higgs and Higgs. And yeah, I've got two metres of it but it's wider, so that's fine. So that's my next option. And my final option is this. So the eagle eyed amongst you will see that this is actually a pillowcase. And um, it's not just because I'm filming this late at night on a Sunday that I'm suggesting I can make a shirt out of a pillowcase. I have got two pillowcases and an entire duvet colour of this. And again, I bought it, I bought this in a charity shop and I bought it around the time I started my YouTube. So probably about two and a half years ago. And again, I've kind of thought, what am I going to use this for? What am I going to use this for? So if you've been watching me from the beginning, you might have seen it before, but it's been languishing in my wardrobe. And actually, it would be quite funky, I think, for a shirt like this one with all the enormous spread across the front. I think it would really show the pattern off. And I also think it would be quite a nice little nod to Claire, who um, gifted me the pattern, because it's red. And she love red, loves red sews. So, 
that's my final option. So let me know what you think. I'm really looking forward to making this. So that's it from me. As I say, I will put the links to all the other vloggers um, down in the description box below. So do go and check them all out and um, have a watch at some of their other vlogs and subscribe to them. And I will be back with my reveal on the 31st of July. But I will see you before then because I've got a kind of bit of a mini fabric haul that keeps growing and it's a bit less mini than it was. Um, and I keep saying I'm going to do that. And then this came up and I thought, I think some some new subscribers have come on board because of this. So I thought I would get on and film this because it is a G July challenge. So I pulled this up my vlog order. Um, and just to say what I'm wearing, I am wearing a Uvita top, which is a free pattern from itch to stitch. Uh, and it's got these cats with that are actually in the shape of telephones on and I am wearing a necklace and earrings which I bought at Sewing for Pleasure which are from Becky's Sewing Studio so I'll pop the link down below. Thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribed and you like what you see please do consider subscribing and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.